And we are back with Jeff, two-time divorce to beautiful Ukrainian women. Ouch! Five children uh, living in Odessa for seven years now. And we're back with the fourth reason why you guys never want to marry a beautiful Ukrainian woman, especially if she's from Kiev or Odessa. Okay, so drum roll. <laughs> Jeff, you live in Odessa. Are there any scammers in Odessa? No, not at all. So it's the nicest city in the world. Uh huh. I mean, you are in the lion's den in Odessa. Well, it's scam central. And Kiev is a little bit better, but Odessa, it has a bad rap well, for in, a reason. In, yeah, in, in, in the old uh, Russian way of doing things, there's two cities uh, Papa Rostov and the Mama Odessa. Uh, and they were the two uh, most criminal cities in all the Soviet Union. Um, so Odessa certainly has a reputation. And when it comes to girls dating agencies and this stuff, uh, it's all about money. It's, it's, it's pay to play. And um, the girls most commonly in Odessa are going to try to get you to take them out to dinner and to buy them stuff, to tour you around the city, and then dump your ass. Lots of restaurant scams. Ah, the, there's even know, menus where one's in English and one's in Russian and compare the prices. I got a good one for you on that one too. Uh, I actually went to a prominent restaurant there. I won't say uh, which place, but uh, uh, this was about five years ago uh, with a lady and uh, we ordered steaks. Okay, they came out, they brought the steaks out, had the original menu, they collected the menus, put the menus back, but when we got the bill, they were $100 each steaks. Ouch. Surprise! Oh. And welcome to Odessa. So you really, and the girl is all in on that. They get a, they get a cut. They make the deals and the arrangements. So you really have to uh, uh, be careful. Yeah, red flag. If she's got to uh, make a bathroom pit stop before you leave, <laughs> you know she's going to get her little uh, cut. take. Yeah. yeah, her cut from the uh, from the bill. The other thing is, you guys got to know, especially in Odessa and Kiev. Okay, uh, if you're gonna th if you think you're gonna get off cheap by dating on free sites, Ukraine Date. I mean, there's a lot of free sites. Tinder, stuff. Badoo, you name all of these apps. There's a lot of prostitutes, and that's how they how they farm for foreigners for Johns on these apps. Absolutely, and so, I've I've tried these sites, especially like with Tinder and Mamba and these, and, and literally, it's uh, I don't you know. It's got to be 80, 90 percent are shoot. actual escorts, prostitutes, and you find that out if you do some dialogue. They're very short with dialogue, and then sooner or later they get to rolling out a price, um, or they try to push you to meet so they can get the free dinner, the free food, and all that stuff. And, and not to get too far off the wagon, but recommendation always with girls here: your first date, no dinners. <laughs> Do the walk by the sea or the walk by the river. Uh, do the walk or sit down at the cafe and have some tea. Avoid spending money up front because that's how you're going to know whether you have a legitimate meeting or not. Yeah, it's, it's a good litmus test. Okay, drum roll. Reason five why you never want to marry a beautiful Ukrainian woman, especially if it's from Kiev or Odessa. So, Jeff, do you know how to tell if a Ukrainian woman is lying? Uh, that's why I've been divorced and so many times. No, I don't have a fucking clue. Her lips are moving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold on. Sorry, <laughs> ladies. A but no, you're cutting that out. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, uh, you know, the thing is, is lying is culturally acceptable here. At least a lot more than back home in the West. Would you agree? Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, they assume that you're lying. Like everything you say. Uh, the, the assumption here when you meet people that you don't know is that at least half of what you're saying is lying. Uh, you lie about little things, where yeah. you work, what your name is. Why? Because most, most of the girls here don't give you their real name up front. Most, so that, that's the first lie right off the bat. Second lie that's very common besides their name uh, will be, for example, uh, where they're from. Uh, third, <laughs> there's, a, there's a list of lies, really. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, that they consider culture acceptable because here, everybody kind of does that. But it's a big shock for someone from the West where we're used to meeting people on face value. We, front, we get their name right away and we have a conversation. Yeah, yeah they call us naive, eh? naive, right? Uh, they think, you know, I mean, they just don't, like Jeff says, they don't believe uh, that much. You know, seeing is believing in uh, Ukraine culture and Slavic culture. Okay, reason number six, guys, why you never want to marry a beautiful Ukrainian woman, especially if she's from Odessa or Kiev, is... What, Jeff? The daddy issues. Daddy issues. <laughs> Lots of daddy issues. You guys got to know, this is the country, unfortunately, of deadbeat dads. There's no legal... Um, 
uh, penalties, yeah. Well, uh, they, they have recourse. a legal, uh, re, yeah, there's no recourse. That's for uh, dads not paying child support. Uh, in fact, do you know what the legal child support is per child for a father? This is legal today in 2019. It's 900 grievances per month. That's, what, 40 bucks per month per child. And that's all the father has to pay that uh, and, and even at that, a lot of them don't pay. Anything. Well, if they don't have a job, how can you pay? And they well, they don't have a job because locations. it's under the counter. Yeah, they uh, under the location. table, rather. It, it, it's still relatively very easy to escape that obligation. And actually, the women are so used to it, they're preconditioned to avoid even trying to get collecting uh, to get support. Uh, it's, I bet it's pretty remarkable how many of them just have the attitude, well, I have a kid, so you're never going to see him again, goodbye. And so it's, they, 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 they feed on each other. But what I think what you're trying to say is that uh, most girls and guys actually have grown up here without a father figure. Their dad got their mom pregnant and then runs off, divorced, whatever, it doesn't matter. But most have grown up in a single parent home, mostly with their mom. Their mom, of course, working to support them, very low amount of money. And this creates a tremendous amount of issues in a country where young girls uh, can be out drinking, smoking, having sex, going to clubs at 16 years of age. Okay, it's nowhere near as strict as it is back home. And I would agree with you, but I would just uh, tone that down a little bit, and I okay. wouldn't say most. I wouldn't say most women have daddy issues or have grown up without a father figure, dad ran off. But yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly a lot more predominant here, a lot more. Yeah, I don't it's know. Been pretty common. A lot more here than back home in the West. Um, and that creates, uh, I mean, when you don't have a father, what that does is it creates a woman with um, insecurities. a low, yeah, a insecurities, insecurities, low self-esteem. So just, uh, you know, a lot of daddy issues here. Um, and I would do things, for example, uh, that I thought would be good for the relationship, but she's so used to doing everything herself and not having any kind of positive role model for a father that any time something didn't quite understand in her mind, she would start blaming or punishing me. Uh, and I found that not just to be me, but very common amongst these girls, because again, they didn't have a father, or a lot. in some cases, they hate their dad because he was never there, or he was always drunk. And so you, they get into arguments, and they want to start projecting those insecurities directly onto you, and that's really hard to deal with. Yeah, there's a lot of psychology about what daddy issues creates here, but you guys just should be aware of it. And it's a good dating question to ask. How is your relationship with your with your father in particular? I always ask one. Yeah, uh -huh. and how I long do now at least? <laughs> it, 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 Joe, you're actually right. It, it, starting off by asking, what's your home life like? Are your mom and dad still together? What was your relationship with your father like? You're going to have a hard time getting them to answer that actually especially if the home is broken. Or they might ask you or look at you like, oh, you're strange, or why are you asking me this? But my God, if only I would have asked, asked these questions earlier in my life, I would have had a lot of yeah. I'll do a little bit of a reclama here, a little bit of an ad. That's one reason why we started doing uh, soul profile videos, which are hitting the channel every week. It's uh, nine very or 10 very tricky questions that we ask uh, ladies uh, in our database uh, to help guys figure that out. And one, two of the questions is, what's your relationship like with your father, your mother, and how long have they been married? And that way, right in the profile of the lady, you get to see daddy issues. And really, there's really tricky psychology-based questions that um, add up to better than being on a first date with a lady. You get to know her better than most guys uh, will after an actual face-to-face -face meeting or date with her. So uh, keep your eye uh, peeled on the channel for more soul profile. And videos. I think what you're saying too is that it's not a penalty that you didn't have your father around, but you want to make sure that the girl that you're getting in a relationship with isn't dragging in this world of hurt that she's going to now project onto you and your relationship that she needed you know, to resolve before she came into your relationship. And he's trying to pre-screen and kind of save you that heartache. Exactly.